I am a transgender woman and I have no regrets. I was born biologically male, but by the age of four, I was playing with dolls. I already knew that something was very different with me. It's like you wake up in the morning and you know that you're in the wrong body and you look in the mirror and you pretty much hate yourself. By the age of 13, my family got me into counseling. I had to see a specialist that specializes in people with gender dysphoria. And through that, I was referred to seeing an endocrinologist. I began hormone therapy at the age of 13. I always knew that the end goal was to have gender reassignment surgery. Before they could sign off on the surgery, one has to live the real life test as a female while seeing a specialist, being monitored by the endocrinologist, and of course, seeing a physician. Every trans person should follow these steps and never take any kind of shortcuts before getting surgery because it's a serious matter. I know it seems like life or death when you're going through this because dysphoria is something really major, but don't take any shortcuts because once you make that decision, there's no going back. Kara, thanks for being here. Is there a certain procedure that once you do that, you can't undo that? Of course, like when you start the hormones, um, you know, if you're male to female, you begin developing breasts. And of course it changes everything about your appearance. So after about a year, you're gonna see some major changes. And the same goes for um, female to male. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's, you hit the point of no return. So then like once those changes happen, then um, the transition is gonna be pretty hard. Yeah. What was the hardest thing for you in de-transitioning? Um, well, I was able to do my makeup and everything pretty well and dress femininely, but the one thing that I can't, still cannot change without surgery was going to be my voice, mm -hmm. because now I'm kind of like raising it a little bit, but it still naturally is, it's more like this. Like I can't just change my voice ever. Like it's always gonna be this low, but I can like train myself to talk about like this, but it's it's still hard, it's still unnatural. This is not my natural voice. But if you're not thinking about it. Yeah, if I'm not thinking about it, I'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can't undo that. No, not without surgery, which yeah. again is not something that I really wanna do. Yeah. Right. Um, now, Carrie, you went through a, a great deal of counseling and preparation. Like I did, but from what I'm hearing nowadays is that people can, I don't know, just call up someone and say, I need hormones. And I think that is very scary. Is that a bad thing to have to go through those steps? I don't think it's a bad thing to have to go through those steps. I think our bad. transition, I think perfect guidelines, talking to specialists and mm -hmm. multiple doctors and therapists to make sure you're psychologically okay and you are sure about this is definitely a part of the process that should stay how it is. Yeah. yeah. To, to ask the questions and cause the person to do it, not just because it's trendy, but because it, they truly feel that way. Yeah, it's a life-altering decision. Yeah. And I think what's scary is that there's so much influence nowadays. I think that um, I've heard of some people saying that being trans is like, it's kind of like being the new token. It's, mm -hmm. it's trendy, it's something that people think is cool, and it's obviously a life-altering decision that takes a lot of thought. Yeah. Because I can tell you, a lot of my practice when I practiced was in medical psychology. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was called on to do sometimes is a surgeon would send someone to me and say, I I would you tell me if you think this psychologically is a good candidate for surgery? Yeah. And I would sometimes say no. And so someone could say, well, you're policing their body. But if somebody was going to get cosmetic surgery, and the surgeon would send them to me and I would talk to him and say, tell me why you're doing this. Well, because I don't like my life and if I get a nose job, that will fix everything. I go, no, this is not a good candidate for surgery. That is not gonna fix everything. It's not gonna change all of your life. It's not gonna fix all of your problems. They have unrealistic expectations, so they're never going to be happy. Absolutely. People have called you transphobic. They have. Why? Um, because I say that I think you should follow the right steps. People think that um, because I'm against shortcuts that I'm this like staunch conservative and that I'm anti-trans and I'm transphobic and I'm thinking, but I am trans. How am I transphobic? Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.